Before we get to episode 120 and yet another crazy Ziggy story, I'd like to ask for your support of the Keystone chapter of the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. Please go to ICan'tSeeYou.com slash coffee and make a purchase at the White Cane Coffee Company. That will earn the Keystone chapter a 10% commission. Thanks so much for your support. I really appreciate it. From Studio B in Swarthmore, this is the I Can't See You podcast with David. It's like blind people for dummies. Hello there and welcome to episode 120 of the I Can't See You podcast. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials. I really appreciate you joining me for today's episode and it's going to start to sound like a broken record. But this is a Ziggy story. I do have another story which I'll get to first. But it's primarily Ziggy and some some trouble that he's had. And, um, of course, it all comes back to us. So it's, it's our fault. But he was the one that <laughs> is paying the price. But I'll get to that in a second. Before I get started with that, I do want to mention something that I've actually been beta testing uh, over the last week or so. And it's something called Web Audio. And basically what it is, it's an app that has news and information that similar to what you can get on, um, if you, if you, on Alexa, you say, Alexa, play news from Bloomberg. Um, you get this little capsule of information of business news. And then it goes, you know, sometimes it's a minute or two, and then it goes to another section where it's maybe, you know, some briefs about, you know, certain stocks or certain companies. And then it, and then there's another sound that, that, triggers the next thing, and that might be a more in-depth conversation about something. And I really like things like that. I also listen to one based in New York from uh, 1010 Winds. You know, you just say, play news from 1010 Winds uh, uh, to Alexa. And, um, you know, you get this short, like, four-minute or so newscast. Um, I usually do that instead of the KYW version because the KYW version it's more than just local, so there's no point in in listening to that. Um, if I wanted all news, I would just you know listen to the radio. And and to be honest, I've been having trouble getting KYW News Radio, which is the news station in Philadelphia. Um, so this web audio is very similar, where it'll play a story, and the story is roughly around 25 or 30 seconds long, and then there's a little music, and then it goes to the next story, and you get to tell the app which um, genres of, or, or topics you want sports and in sports, you can play, you know, just baseball or baseball, football, basketball, hockey. And, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of other sports listed and, you know, there's politics if you wanted that and there's technology and there's blindness issues. It's primarily a blindness app. Uh, but I can't wait for it to come out because the potential for it is huge. And it's something that I've always wanted with, especially again, with, either Alexa or the, you know, the Google lady. Um, I'm not sure what we call, I guess we call her the G lady. <laughs> That's what I have on my desk here, and I'm glad it didn't start. Um, the rest of the house has Alexa. We have a couple of Alexas in the house. Um, and by Alexa, I mean Echo or Echo Dot. Uh, sound kind of silly saying it that way. Um, so it's just very cool. Now, there are some things that, that I'd love to see once this web audio goes live, that, you know, it'd be cool instead of picking, you know, I picked basically technology, sports, and business um, for my topics. So it will go from one, you know, might give me a technology report, uh, you know, 30 second story, and then, you know, some sports, and then it'll go to something else. Um, it would be cool if you could say, you know, web audio play sports news, and then it would just play the sports news stories that are most recent. Um, and um, so, so far, it's been very cool. And, it, you know, it's something that as I continue to do work for NFB Newsline, and, and as Jane likes to say, I'm basically an unpaid intern for, for NFB Newsline. I basically input applications from anybody in Pennsylvania when I get them, uh, as well as other information that comes through on what's called the Pennsylvania channel on Newsline. So if you're in Pennsylvania, um, when you log on to this service, whether it's via phone or via the, the app for the iPhone uh, or even the website, if your address is in Pennsylvania, you get the Pennsylvania stuff. Even if you're in New Mexico, you're still going to get Pennsylvania stuff. So, um, 
you know, it's a very cool thing, but it's, I don't want to say it's outdated, but there's a lot of easier ways to get the information. You can, you know, especially with the iPhone, you know, most of the, most of the um, websites are somewhat um, accessible, not a hundred percent. Sometimes you get hung up in a, in an advertising loop and you can't get out or you get hung up on, on some stories. A couple of news aggregator sites that I go to, the headlines are wrong. And I think I've mentioned this before where, you know, because I have a little bit of sight, I can see a headline is basically, you know, three lines on my screen long and it's, you know, it's in column. So, so I see three lines and, you know, each line might have, you know, two to four words. But when I say, when I, when I touch that headline, it says, um, completely outraged. I know that that's not the right headline. So the audio is not, is not working with what's there. And I don't know why that is. And, um, and, you know, I just, I, I, I don't know how to fix it. Usually that's with the app that I'm using for that website. If I go to the actual website um, for that news aggregator, uh, it, will, it will play it correctly. So uh, I just see at some point some audio service like this web audio, maybe it will be web audio, maybe it'll be a different one, just overtaking Newsline as the go-to for blind folks to get their news and information. And as I continue testing it, uh, I'm talking with one of the people um, who are associated with it, and I don't know how high up he is or if he's just, if he's the main guy, I don't know. Um, you know, but I'm going to get into it if, you know, there's going to be an uh, Alexa skill, an Amazon Echo skill, um, you know, so that you can, you know, I could just walk in, for example, into my kitchen and say, you know, Alexa, play web audio, and then it just start to play it, or it may ask, do you want, you know, sports, business, technology, or all, or breaking, or whatever, and I think that would be so cool, and uh, I'm looking forward to that, so so I've been beta testing that, and, and it's very cool, and um, so once it, once it becomes live, uh, I will let you know. If you are blind or visually impaired and want a beta test, please shoot me an email, and I will pass it on to the people who can get you in on this so you can also try it out. Uh, the stories that they have there are not current, so it's not like you are going to go and listen to see how the markets closed today or you know how the playoff push is in the NHL. You're, you're not going to get that. It's, uh, <laughs> from what I could tell, some of the stories are as, uh, you know, from you know, third and fourth quarter of 2019. Um, uh, you know, maybe, maybe a little more recent. Um, but some of the things, you know, when, when I heard them, I'm like, wow, this seems really old. You know, one of the stories I listened to was, uh, UPS partnering with, uh, a company called too simple to do self-driving, self-driving tractor trailers to, you know, take cargo from point A to point B. And, you know, when I Googled that, the story was, you know, from sometime in uh, either third or fourth quarter 2019. So, uh, but it's very cool to get the idea of how the app will work once it's live and, um, you know, to fix the bugs and, and everything else at, at this point. So, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, it is going to be a paid service. So, um, you know, hopefully some of these suggestions that I have, and I'm sure that other people have, will will happen and make and make it work. But it's it's very cool. And um, you know, like I said, when I when I walk into the kitchen and I want news, I don't want to have to play CNN or Fox News Channel, you know, via Sirius XM because it, you know sometimes it's you know long form news. I just want headlines and you know maybe a little blur. Basically, the lead paragraph is good. Uh, for me, at least, you know, just to, you know, if I want to look at it later, once I'm out of the kitchen, then I could go, you know, on my phone and Google it or uh, use one of those news aggregating sites that I go to and, and read more about it. So, uh, so it's very cool. And, uh, you know, hopefully the NFB will get on board with something like that if they don't get on board with this. Uh, I did find out about it through the NFB. So, uh, so hopefully they're, they're on board with it. And, um, you know, it's very promising. So we'll see how it goes. And, uh, and I'll let you know once it actually goes live. And uh, I'll put links in the show notes once it does go live. I, obviously, there's no links at this point because it's beta testing. And uh, it's, at this point, it's only, it seems like it's only available for the iPhone. I'm not 100% on that. But I think it's right now just for the iPhone. Uh, again, because more blind folks use an iPhone because it's more accessible out of the box than uh, any Android or 
uh, Microsoft device uh, out of the box. So we'll see how that goes and I'll let you know. Now, again, I know I said I'm sounding like a broken record as far as Ziggy goes, but it is just unreal. You know, when I was growing up, I had a dog named Schnapps. We got him when I was like five years old and he died when I was in college um, in 1983, in February of 83. So so he was he was kind of old. I, I want to say he was like twelve or fourteen years old. I don't remember exactly. And um, and uh, <laughs> he went to the vet maybe maybe ten times in his lifetime. And I say that because when we got him, I don't think we took him to the vet. Once he had all his shots. We didn't take him to the vet. He had this growth on his eyelid that had to get surgically repaired, removed and then repaired. And he had the cone of shame and everything. Um, when he was probably, I don't know, eight or 10 years old. So, um, you know, we used to joke, who went to, did, did Schnapps go to the vet more than my dad went to the dentist? And my dad hadn't gone to the dentist. He went like 40 years without going to the dentist, which is kind of funny. And the funny thing is the dentist was his friend. <laughs> so he would see him at card games and see him, you know, all over the place, but he never went to the vet. And finally, at some point when our dentist retired and his son, our friend Bruce Goddick took over, he, Bruce finally convinced my dad to go. And, and, you know, at that point, of course, my dad needed, you know, his teeth were getting chipped from from, every, you know, eating ice and, you know, not going to the dentist for 40 years. And, um, you know, my dad liked to, used to like to say, hey, I, you know, I went to the vet or I went to the dentist when I was in the army. <laughs> Obviously, that was during World War II, so it wasn't yesterday. So so the the fact that Schnapps went to the vet maybe 10 times in his lifetime makes me think that we got Ziggy on January 10th. His first vet appointment was January 28th, and I am willing to bet we've been there almost every week since. Now, some of those appointments were actually scheduled where, you know, he was getting a shot or he was, you know, getting some sort of checkup. Many of them, of course, were not. The one where we had to take him and they induced vomiting, uh, the one where we took him just a week or so ago, uh, where um, there was a problem with his jaw and we were worried that there was something wrong with it. There were, turns out there was, there was no issue. Um, and a couple others, uh, unscheduled, unscheduled trips. One of them was on Monday of this week. I, I'm recording this on Wednesday. So just a couple days ago. So we, on, on Sunday, Easter, uh, we took Ziggy with us when we went to uh, we didn't want him sitting in the house by himself, so we took him with us when we went to visit Liz's dad's grave and to visit Liz's mother's house to say Happy Easter. And if you're wondering what we left at Liz's dad's grave, we left a Hershey kiss because what Liz used to get, uh, what what Liz's dad used to do for the Easter egg hunt uh, was put Hershey kisses in those plastic eggs. Uh, so that's why she wanted to do a Hershey kiss. And uh, and and. <laughs> And while we're speaking of cemeteries, my mom's birthday was on Saturday the 3rd, and we took her, she loved the sugar wafers, so we took her some sugar wafers. And, and again, you know, tell me if you think that it is kind of weird, as, as Liz likes to, likes to say, it's, it's an offering. <laughs> but we, we take something every time we go. You know, Mother's Day is coming up. You know, maybe we'll take my mom some coffee. I don't know what we'll take. You know, usually we don't take flowers. Um, I don't even know if they're... I know it, at the one cemetery where Liz's father's buried, I think you can take flowers. I'm not 100% on the cemetery where my mom is. Um, I think you can take them, but then you have to go back and, you know, once they're dead, you pick them up. I, I'm not 100%. Um, so I'm sure they probably don't enjoy us bringing food and leaving food there. <laughs> I mean, the rabbi didn't say anything when at my mom's funeral, we dumped some coffee in on top instead of throwing dirt on top of the casket. I mean, coffee really was her her lifeblood. My mom would have been 92, by the way, on uh, this past Saturday. So we always do that. And I'm, I, I almost can feel my dad shaking his head when we do stuff like this. And we take stuff, obviously, when we go to see him too. But on Easter, so we took Ziggy <clears throat> in the car 
And he's not great in the car, which is kind of troubling because we're hoping that once, you know, everything starts to open up again and we go places, he'll come with. Uh, you know, once Jane is back in New York, we'll be going to visit her. Obviously, we want to take him and he's going to want to see her. I know she's going to want to see him. So he was sitting in the back seat with her and... Um, and, it, and I don't know if we were stopped at a light or whatever, but he jumped up front and was sitting with me. His main goal is to get to Liz. And of course, that would be dangerous because Liz is the one driving. So we went to the cemetery and we went to visit Liz's grandparents' grave, which is, I don't know, maybe, you know, a couple hundred yards from Liz's dad's grave. But the cemetery is so big in, um, in Springfield. Um, I think it's called St. Peter and Paul. Uh, not 100%, but it's huge. I mean, there's all sorts of roads through it. It's it's crazy how big it is compared to the Jewish cemetery where my mom and dad are. So we're driving from Liz's grandparents' grave to Liz's dad's grave. And Ziggy starts to make this funny noise and I could feel his his stomach, because he's sitting on me, I could feel his stomach like convulsing. And I said, Liz, you got to stop, pull over. And he throws up. And he throws up on me and on the seat. And, um, and we're like, ooh, I, you know, is it from the heat of the day? Is it from being in the car? He doesn't like the car. So we figured we'd watch him. You know, we cleaned up, you know, went to Liz's dad's grave, left, left the Hershey kiss, Hershey kiss, went over to Liz's mother's house and talked to, to her and uh, Liz's sister Margaret for a few minutes, got back in the car and came home. We got home and Ziggy seemed pretty good. You know, we took him out back. He was running around. Uh, but his stomach was making all these weird noises. And so we're watching him and, you know, we said, all right, well, let's see what happens once he eats dinner. So we, you know, we gave him a banana uh, once we got home and, and maybe a carrot or two. And then he, fed, he had dinner at six o'clock and he seemed okay, maybe a little sluggish, maybe a little sleepy. Again, we weren't 100% sure. You know, it was a, wasn't a hot day, but it was a warm day. And, you know, again, we don't know how much he likes the car, if at all. So, you know, when, when he's, it gets to be like 9 o'clock, we're figuring, okay, this is around how long it was from the time he ate lunch to the time he threw up in the car at the cemetery. He ate lunch around noon, threw up in the car a little after 3. So when we got past 9.15, 9.30, we thought, okay, things are okay. But he seemed to be slowing down even more so. So we keep watching him, and his stomach is making all sorts of crazy noises. And, and Jane is saying, I'm, you know, I said, you know, we were watching TV. I said, I said, oh, my God, did you hear that? And she's like, yeah, your stomach is that. I said, it wasn't my stomach. It was Ziggy's. And so we're watching him, and... You know, we take him out, and he's still going to the bathroom and everything, so we think, okay, everything is okay. But then around midnight, a little before midnight, two minutes till midnight on Sunday night, he threw up. And we're like, uh-oh, okay. And, you know, Jane was there. And it, the funny thing was, it kind of matched our carpet. I didn't, I really couldn't see it. And, you know, Jane says, well, it looks just like the carpet, which made me a little nervous because I'm thinking if he throws up when I'm watching him, Am I even going to know if I'm not in there? And if I am in there, am I going to find it once he gets sick and, you know, moves around away from it? Let's face it. If he throws up, he tries to eat it right away. <laughs> so there, there would be no cleanup if I missed him, you know, getting it. I mean, you have to stop him. And every time, even when we gave him the, um, the stuff to make him throw up or the vet gave him the stuff to make him throw up, um, you know, he, he tries to eat it right away, whether it was the vinyl gloves or whether it was the sock that when we took him to the vet, you know, initially back, you know, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. So, so I'm a little concerned because, you know, it's getting late now. It's, you know, now it's midnight. I said to Jane, I said, why don't you call that animal hospital where we took him? You know, again, it's, you know, it's midnight on now Monday morning, um, you know, after Easter, it, I know our normal vet isn't even open on Sunday, let alone, you know, at midnight. So, you know, she gets to the, to that vet and talks to someone and they said, yeah, we've got a three or four hour wait. And I said, well, three or four hours, you know, we can certainly, you know, in three hours, we could take him over there if he looks to be getting worse. And, you know, that the lady said, look, we're here all the time. So, you know, if you do need to bring him in, just bring him in and, uh, and we can go from there. 
about two minutes after Jane got off the phone with them, he threw up again. And, and now we were a little more concerned because now he's thrown up three times, you know, in the span of, you know, roughly, you know, nine hours. Um, so, you know, I sleep, he, he, his cage is in the living room, so I slept on the couch until Liz woke up. And, you know, I'd left a message for her, you know, of everything that I had, you know, of him throwing up, that we called the one animal place. And then at, um, at around 2.25, you know, I gave him some water, which he, he almost gulped down, um, you know, and I, he wouldn't take it out of his bowl. I, I had to give it to him in a Dixie cup. And he was drinking it. And of course, it's, you know, it's a, one of those little ones that keep in the bathroom. So there, <laughs> so water's going everywhere. And I said, all right, come on, let's go in the kitchen instead of having it in here. I took him into the kitchen and he's, he's drinking more and he drank quite a bit of it. And, you know, I'm sure we spilled a fair share of it as well. So, you know, he's now seems better. But, you know, in fact, he jumped up on me when he wanted, when he saw me with the cup of water. And so I said, all right, well, let's go out and see if you have to go to the bathroom. And he did. He went out and he peed and we brought, I brought him back in. And, you know, at this point, of course, Jane is long, long since asleep in bed. Um, so I brought him back in and to get him to go into his cage, you know, when I tell him night, night, I usually give him something and I didn't want to give him food. I thought, you know, I'm going to give him a little piece of frozen banana because, you know, banana would probably be easier on his stomach than the food. So I told him night, night, he goes into his cage. I give him the banana. All is good. And I stay down there with him. And at that point, I, you know, I was basically sleeping. I don't want to say sleeping with one eye open because, you know, <laughs> you, you know just because. <laughs> but I didn't hear him, you know, I didn't hear him get sick again. Um, he didn't whine or complain overnight. And, you know, Liz gets up early. Liz gets up a little after five. So she came down when she saw I wasn't in bed and saw me sleeping on the couch and said, what's going on? I said, well, I texted you everything. I said, but here's, here's the story. I said, we got to take him in today. And so Liz took him out to go to the bathroom, which she did. Um, and she made an appointment for our local vet and we took him over there and she says, well, you know, part of his intestine does seem dilated, I, but because it's an x-ray, I can't really tell what it is. You have to, I have to send you to a place that can do an ultrasound, and then if they have to, they can do surgery. The place that we had to go to is a place in uh, called Metropolitan uh, Veterinary Associates or something like that. Um, uh, MVA, MVS, it, it's metro hyphen vet.com <laughs> if you want to look it up i'll put it in the show notes so we go there and they couldn't give us an appointment but we could go for emergency uh because you know they have an emergency area and you know they 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 said you know be prepared you may have to wait a while and we were okay with that so we go and of, of course he doesn't again he's not a fan of the car and, and he, uh, he's also not feeling well because now is you know we could tell his stomach wasn't right or you know there was something going on and, um, so we get there and, and, uh, you know, we have to wait a while. And, uh, it was a little troubling when you pull in due to COVID, you don't go in anymore. You pull into a parking space and you call a phone number that's on a sign in front of the parking space. And then you get into their, you know, their, their, uh, phone system, you know, press, press whatever, if it's an emergency. And we, we had to do that three times just to get, get a hold of someone, uh, because it just kept kicking us back into the main loop. Uh, so that was a little troubling. We thought, you know, we're in trouble because it's a big place. Again, it's in Norristown, PA, which is in the center of Montgomery County. Uh, it's around 30 miles from, from where we are in Swarthmore. So, um, you know, so we're waiting and, and finally they come and take them. And then the vet calls us, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes to uh, uh, 45 minutes an hour after they take them back. And they're, they're saying how much everybody loves him and how he's, he's quickly becoming a fan favorite there and this and that and the other with the people that work there. I'm guessing not, not the animals. Um, and and I just, it just made me think back to our dog Zamboni that we had when the kids were little. Um, you know, all, all sorts of people love that dog and he was so friendly to people. And it's, and it, it's got to be the breed because, you know, Ziggy is very similar um, so it's gotta be the breed. And, um, 
you know, and she explained to us what's going on, said, you know, he needs surgery. You know, there's, you know, there's some piece of fabric or some strip of material that's, that he ate. And then we started thinking, Liz came out when I was out with him on Friday afternoon, late in Friday afternoon, you know, five o'clock hour Friday afternoon and said he has something in his mouth. I didn't realize he had something in his mouth. You know, as I've mentioned before, he goes back and gets wood chips. Well, the day before we had the back part of our fencing installed and it was the fencing to match the rest of the backyard. As I mentioned before, the fence that was along the back property line was just a wire fence that he could have jumped over. He didn't realize he could have jumped over it, but he could have jumped over it because it was no higher than our bed. So we had that replaced with the same normal six foot high white vinyl fencing um, that covers the rest of the backyard. Well, when they put that in, they dug up, obviously to dig the holes to put the posts in, you know, they dug down, I don't know how many feet, but the, the dirt that was dug up was very clay-like. So we, I always thought, you know, when he had stuff in his mouth over the next day or two, it was, you know, it was hunks of that. So we thought, you know, I thought at least, you know, I knew he had something because, <laughs> because when he has something that he shouldn't have, he's very proud of it. And he always wants to display it, whether it's my shirt when he grabs it off the, off the floor, you know, in the house, he runs around and wags his tail like crazy and is very proud of what he, <laughs> what he has in his mouth. Well, he does the same thing outside, except it's worse. He kind of... If you've ever seen that statue, and I don't know if it's moved from Mile High Stadium to the to the new Bronco Stadium with the horse up on its hind legs, that's what he looks like, running around with, with whatever he's got that he shouldn't have. It, he looks like that, hopping around on his back legs like he's, you know, he's king of the world. And, and, um, and then to get it back from him is almost impossible. So when Liz saw he had something and thought that it wasn't that clay... Um, she tried to get him to come in with a carrot because carrots are his go-to. You say, you just have to say Ziggy carrot. If he's back in the bushes, he will come running out and right into the house to get the carrot. Well, at this point, I had tried to run after him and tried to get what he had before that. So as we were running after him and before Liz had gotten inside, he had eaten most of whatever it was. And to this point, we still don't know what it was, whether it was something that the guys dug up when they were digging the holes, whether it was something that wrapped some of the um, fencing material, whether it was something that Ziggy dug up that blew into our yard, you know, when, you know, and that, and that was one, one main reason that we really wanted the, besides him being able to jump over the other fence, you know, all sorts of, you know, debris would blow into our, into our backyard from other, from other places because that back fence was just this wire you know, again, like I've mentioned before, it was like a barbed wire fence without the barbs. And, you know, it wasn't a chain link where a lot of trash would be stopped. I mean, stuff just blew right through it. And, you know, it was enough that if he tried to run through it, he couldn't because it was wires every, you know, four inches or so. But, um, you know, trash and, and whatever else could blow in. So I don't know if it was that. Whatever it was, it got lodged partially in his stomach and then made its way through his intestine and he just couldn't pass it from his stomach into his intestine and pass it all the way through. So, um, you know, in hindsight, we should have tried to induce vomiting on Friday night. But I think the thinking was that it was maybe a paper towel and he passed the paper towel a week before so it wouldn't be an issue. You know, and, and as Liz said, it wasn't even, like, it was just a strip of whatever it was. I don't, again, I don't know if it was plastic. We didn't get it back once, once they took it out of them, so we don't know what it is. I don't know if it was cloth, plastic, or something else. So, you know, again, hindsight, we should have tried to, you know, give him the peroxide to make him throw it up, and we didn't. And um, so... You know, so they kept him on Monday night. They did the surgery, and that was that was just <laughs> so brutal for us because the vet, when who checked him in and checked him out, you know, meaning looked at him, said, "Okay, you should hear from somebody around four or five o'clock this afternoon." You know, and we're waiting and we're waiting, and it's six o'clock, and then seven o'clock, and she's like, "You know, Liz is like, should I call?" 
And finally, she calls at 7.30 or 8 o'clock, and uh, the person said, well, you know, there's another, you know, they're busy with another dog. Can you give us a call back at, at 9 o'clock or after 9? I forget what she said. So, but in the meantime, they had called us and it was right around nine or a little before nine. And, you know, they explained, you know, what went down. It was, you know, um, they only had to make the one incision into his stomach and they could pull it through that. And that was, other than having him throw it up, that was the best case scenario. One incision in the stomach. They didn't have to take and cut into the intestine or take any intestine out because that was, you know, a possibility. That's what the first vet who looked at him said that may have to be done. And um, so we were very happy about that. And they, they said that he would be in for another day or two. And, um, and we were hoping it would be two days because, you know, we don't know how we're going to contain this guy uh, because we know how he is and we know, we know how rammy he is and how he, he likes to get into things. So, you know, we were surprised when, I was surprised when Liz texted me first thing on Tuesday morning saying we're tentatively going to pick him up at five o'clock this afternoon. And, and I'm like, holy cow, it's, you know, I don't know how they know. And, and Jane says, why tentatively? And I said, you know, probably because, you know, they have to see how he goes the rest of the day. Um, you know, they were saying when, when they, uh, when they texted us, when they texted or called Liz, they said that he has vor a voracious appetite, which of course we knew, and that hasn't changed. And, you know, sadly for him, he can't have his favorites, bananas and broccoli and carrots now. He has, you know, he's on this bland diet of, of, uh, of chicken and rice. And, you know, now I feel bad when I want to eat a banana. I make sure I don't do it in front of him because I know it'll go crazy. And um, the other funny thing is we had gotten a rye bread on Monday night. And he loves rye bread. When he hears the toaster oven going off, he always assumes that there's rye toast in there. Um, whether it's, you know, rye toast or a bagel or, you know, some small, you know, uh, frozen, frozen food thing. Um, so it's, it's kind of funny. So, you know, he always goes running into the kitchen when he hears the, when he hears that go off the uh, toaster oven. So now we have this rye bread sitting there and, you know, he knows as soon as we get into the bag that, you know, like today, you know, at lunch, I was, I was making a piece of rye toast and he, he was laying down and he came running in. He knew exactly what it was. So, um, so we were fortunate that it was, you know, like I said, just the one incision in the stomach. Um, but the, you know, they gave us this list. He can't do this and he can't do that. Don't have him run. Don't have him jump. Make sure he walks down every step. I've been telling him that since he started going up and down the stairs, I said, Ziggy, touch them all. Make sure you touch them all. There's been times when he's been coming from, uh, the upper floor to the main level of the house where he will jump from the third or fourth step, uh, over the weekend, uh, to walk into our backyard from our kitchen, uh, there are four steps. There's a landing and then, you know, and then you go uh, down four times from the landing. He was jumping off the side from the landing down to the cement below, which is a little hairy because the way he jumped, there's stairs that go down into our basement about three or four feet away. So if he does, if he, if his momentum carries him, he could go tumbling down those stairs. But, you know, <laughs> We talked to him about that, and hopefully he won't do that again for a while. Well, now that he's got the cone of shame, he can't even jump off the side because he doesn't fit through the railing. You know, when, when he doesn't have the cone of shame on, he can obviously fit through the railing. So, um, you know, so just all these things that he always does, we knew we're not going to be able to stop him. I mean, we weren't home more than more than five minutes, and I had washed my hands be because, you know, he had he had peed a little bit, when, before we got in the car to bring him home and it was on the, you know, it was on the leash a little bit. So I wanted to wash my hands. I'm washing my hands. I, dr I get the paper towels to dry my hands. And as I'm drying my hands, he jumps up on me to try and grab the paper towel. So, you know, I knew this was going to be a battle and, you know, <laughs> we have, yes, yesterday was, we had two weeks until our next appointment where he gets the stitches out. And, um, you know, so I, I said to him, I said, all right, Ziggy, only 14 days today. I said, listen, only 13 more days to go. You get the cone of shame off and you can have, you can have other food. And, um, but you know, today he's jumping up on the counter. When I say jumping up, just, just his front paws, he's not physically getting his whole body up there. Thank God. Um, but you know, the main issue is when he's out in our backyard and, and, 
again, a good reason why we had that fence put up was to stop stuff from blowing in so we can let him run around in the backyard without being on a leash because he loves to run around. We love throwing the ball. He loves to run after the ball, watch it stop, and then run off into the trees because he, he, he doesn't know he's a retriever. He just, you know, sometimes he'll pick it up and bring it back, but more times than not, he will pick it up, put it down, and then run back into the trees, or he'll stop it with his body and then run into the trees to go get some wood chips or, or something else that's back there. And, um, you, you know, so it's hard. And when he does have something from back there, I can't tell what it is. And I can't get close enough to him if it's something he shouldn't have and he knows he shouldn't have it, he will run away from me. Wood chips now, he knows I will let him chew on the wood chips. So, you know, I'll say, what do you have, buddy? And let me, let me see, and I'll, I'll touch it, and I'll feel that it's a wood chip. I'll say, okay, you're good. But sometimes I'll touch it, and it'll be a rock, or it'll be some of that, that clay that's clumped together so hard. It, feel, it feels like a rock, but it's, you know, it's just, you know, just dirt, and if you squeeze hard enough, you can break it apart. And, um, you know, and honestly, when, I, when he had a blockage, I kind of thought it was going to be that. I thought it was going to be that, you know, because it's like, it's like cement when it's dry, so I can just imagine, you know, stuck in, stuck in your intestines, you know, <laughs> what it does. So, you know, and now around the house, you know, I've, I've always been a little worried about, you know, when I'm taking a medicine, you know, if I drop it on the floor, I mean, he's on stuff so quickly um, that, you know, I've always been worried. And, you know, especially with a pill, whether it's, you know, Tylenol or Advil or, or my, you know, my... Uh, uh, Otesla, which is for the arthritis, um, you know, I, I can't, the Otesla is the same color as our carpet. There's no way I'd, I'd find it. Um, you know, so I'm so careful when I take those because I know he'll be right on it. Same thing with, I take an eye drop called Restasis and it's in individual tubes. So, you know, I know when I take it, you have to pop the top off, you know, it's disposable, you, you know, be, because there's no, um, there's no preservative in it. So, you know, um, you know, you rip the top off, you take the drop in each eye, and then, so now you have a, a little top and, you know, like a tube that you then have to throw away. So I usually wrap it in, a, in, a, in the tissue I use to dry my eyes, and either, if I'm not near a trash can, stick it in my back pocket so we can't get to it, um, or take it right to the trash if we're not in the middle of doing something. So I'm paranoid because, you know, because I know that I won't be able to find it if I drop it. And if he gets it, it will be very bad for him. Um... Uh, you know, but I can't see if he's picked up stuff, if somebody's left something, a paper towel, a tissue, um, whatever. So, you know, so now more than ever, and, and hearing from the other, uh, his siblings' owners, a lot of them have had issues with, you know, one of them also ate a sock, and it's it's just something they do. I was talking to our lawn guy today because we wanted to think about something to put where the trees are, where he can't, you know, pick up stuff. And we came to the conclusion like a river rock might be the best thing where it's a larger size that he might be able to pick it up with his mouth, but he won't be able to swallow it. Um, so we're going to look at those over the weekend to see, but um, <laughs> there it is never dull around here with him. And, um, you know, just wish us luck <laughs> over these next 13 days because it is going to be hairy um, with him and, and jumping and wanting to go up the stairs and, and, and do all the stuff that he usually does, you know, basically Ziggy being Ziggy, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a difficult 13 days. So, uh, so, you know, like I said, wish us luck. I've got 13 sleeps left before he gets the stitches out and, um, you know, hopefully, um, that'll all go well. And, um, <laughs> And, you know, the visits will uh, lessen to the vet. Um, you know, I know we go on Friday, he's getting a shot. And then, like I said, uh, nothing's on the calendar for next week. So let's hope it stays that way. And then on the 20th, we go and he gets the stitches out. So that is my Ziggy story for this week. In case you were wondering, or if you weren't, um, please, please wish us the best for that. I hope you are staying safe and being well. I hope you've been able to start your shot uh, for COVID. Uh, I'm actually scheduled to go on Friday of this week. Um, that's uh, day after this episode drops. So if you're listening to this the day it drops, that's tomorrow. I'm getting the Moderna vaccine. And um, not going to lie, I'm a little worried about that because, you know, all new medicines mess with me in some sort of way or another. So I will let you know how it goes. And um, 
And again, I appreciate you listening. Again, continue to stay safe and be well. And I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the I Can't See You podcast with David. Please rate, review and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends.